Along the trace of a strike-slip fault, you might not expect very many landforms, because after all, it's just one block of rock sliding past another one, right? Well, no. If there are slight deviations in the orientation of the fault, or if it steps over from one splay of the fault to another, you can get small local areas where the rocks are either being squished or the, where the rocks are being stretched. The areas where they're being squished are called transpressional zones, and the areas where they're being stretched are transtensional. There's an example of a transpressional zone right here behind me. There's a little ridge that you see, and that ridge occurs along the trace of the Hayward Fault, where it steps over to the left. And that right lateral fault then is squishing the rocks in this little area right behind me, and the rocks have nowhere to go except straight up. Well, I've just walked over that little pressure ridge, and I've come to the edge of the parking lot here. And there's a couple of features that are worth our attention at this site. If we look down the line of the curb, we can see that it's not straight. And that's not because of some shoddy construction, that's because of the Hayward Fault. So you can see that it moves over to the right here. It's deflected. And that's just like if a stream were to cross the fault or some other linear feature that's perpendicular to the fault, it will be deflected to the right. The curb's also experiencing some vertical motion here. So in addition to being deflected to the right, you can see that it's popped up a bit here relative to its neighbor. And that's because this is a little tiny pressure ridge where we've got a left step in the right lateral fault. So we've got this stuff moving up because it's being squished right here. But if we go a few feet in that direction, we see a little tiny zone of transtension. Let me show you. I've only walked a few steps, but here I've got a different little micro tectonic situation. Here we have a right lateral step in the fault, and that allows a little zone of transtension to open up. As the soil underneath this parking lot is uh, dropping down along that zone, it allows fractures to develop, similarly oriented fractures, in the asphalt surface, and those have dropped down, creating a low spot in the parking lot surface. I'm now standing outside the boathouse on Lake Elizabeth, and behind me are the East Bay Hills. The biggest peak over there is Mission Peak, and Mission Peak is a large example of a pressure ridge, kind of the same thing we were just looking at on a small scale in the parking lot and on a sort of human scale with the pressure ridge that was covered by grass and trees. This is basically a mountain-sized version of that. The reason that Mission Peak is there is it's caught in a little zone of transpression between the southern end of the Hayward Fault and the northern end of the Calaveras Fault, which is on the other side of the mountain. That's basically a left step in this overall right lateral strike-slip fault system, and Mission Peak is caught in that squeezing zone. And so the rocks there are basically popping up into the air.